In this lesson, we will learn about metric and imperial units. Let's use a chart to organize the metric units. The meter is the base unit for metric measurements. A referent is something you can use to estimate the approximate size of a unit. One possible referent for a meter is the distance from the floor to the doorknob. The next metric unit is the decameter. It is 10 meters long. A referent for a decameter would be the width of a small house. Next we have the hectometer, which is 100 meters. A referent for the hectometer is the length of a football field. The biggest unit we commonly work with is the kilometer. It is 1,000 meters long. A kilometer is about the distance you can walk in 15 minutes. Now we'll look at units smaller than a meter. The decimeter is one-tenth of a meter. A decimeter is roughly the length of a crayon. Next we have the centimeter, which is one-hundredth of a meter. A centimeter is about the width of a paperclip. The smallest unit commonly used is a millimeter. This is one thousandth of a meter. A millimeter is about the thickness of a dime. Note that the units decimeter, decameter, and hectometer are included in the table for completeness only, as these units are rarely used in the real world. In Part B, we are given a list of scenarios and we need to determine the most appropriate measuring tool. A tape measure is useful for objects that require a flexible measuring tool. For example, a tape measure can be used to measure the circumference of a ball. A 30 centimeter ruler is useful for measuring short, straight distances. For example, we can use it to draw a 9 centimeter line on a sheet of paper. Vernier calipers are useful for measuring objects that require a high degree of precision. We could use calipers to find the width of an engine part to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. A trundle wheel is useful for measuring long distances. We could use it to find the distance between two trees in a field. Now we'll move on to a list of scenarios. Pick the measuring tool that is most appropriate in each case. The width of your textbook can be measured with a 30 centimeter ruler. The perimeter of a park can be measured with a trundle wheel. The circumference of a vase can be measured with a tape measure. The diameter of a ring can be measured with precision using calipers. The distance from your house to a friend's house can be measured with a trundle wheel. The thickness of a smartphone can be measured with precision using calipers. The width of a kitchen window can be measured with the tape measure. In Part C, we'll learn about imperial units. The inch is the smallest imperial unit commonly used.
1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. One inch is roughly the distance from the middle thumb joint to the tip of the thumb. The next imperial unit is the foot. One foot is 12 inches. One foot is equal to 30.48 centimeters. This is about the same as a 30 centimeter ruler. Next we have the imperial yard. One yard is three feet. In metric, one yard is 0 0.9144 meters. This is a little shorter than a one meter ruler. The largest imperial unit commonly used is the mile. One mile is 1,760 yards. One mile is 1.609 kilometers. This is about the distance you can walk in 20 minutes. In Part D we are asked, what are some of the drawbacks to using imperial units as a form of measurement? Drawback number one is that converting between imperial units often requires the use of a conversion chart. In metric, all conversions are based on powers of 10. This makes it easy to convert units. Drawback number two is that imperial units are not effective in communicating very small measurements. In metric, a micrometer is one millionth of a meter, which is about the size of a single bacteria cell. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, which is about the size of a virus. Both of these measurements are often used by biologists. The smallest imperial unit is called a thou, which is one twelve thousandth of a foot. This leads to cumbersome values for bacteria and virus measurements. Drawback number three is that inconsistent use of metric and imperial units can increase the risk of accidents. In 1983, Air Canada Flight 143 from Montreal to Edmonton ran out of fuel in flight above Manitoba. Fortunately, the skilled pilot was able to make an emergency landing in a field near the town of Gimli. This incident drew worldwide attention, and the airplane involved has been given the nickname the Gimli Glider. After the incident, investigators determined that an error in imperial metric conversions resulted in too little fuel being added to the tank. So if everything was measured using just one system, an error like this wouldn't have occurred. In Part E, we are asked why it is important to understand both imperial units and metric units. The United States uses the imperial system. Since the U.S. is Canada's largest trading partner, Canadians are exposed to imperial measurements nearly every day. In the working world, you will encounter both metric and imperial measurements. Therefore, you should know what they are and how to do basic conversions. In Math 10c, we will only study the imperial units of distance, inches, feet, yards, and miles. However, there are other imperial units you may wish to learn about on your own, such as mass, which has imperial units of ounces, pounds, and tons, volume, which is measured in fluid ounces, pints, or gallons, and area, which is measured in square feet, square miles, or acres.